Good morning, Jeremy. Morning, Matt. How are you? Oh, very well. What a beautiful morning it is. It is, it is. What, what time is it over there with you at the moment? Oh, we're about two hours behind, so 6.30 a.m., uh, nice and early. No one's on the road, so, yeah, nice and quiet. <laughs> We've got Good. a bit of a, a monsoon flying over at the moment, um, which I quite like. It's 26 degrees as opposed to 30, uh, excuse me, 31 degrees, which is good. What about yourself? Yeah, look, I mean, it's a, it's a nice uh, sunny day here in Melbourne, um, yeah. but obviously at this time of the year, if it's sunny, it's a, a little bit cold, but, um, you know, it won't be too long before we all pour out and uh, are ready to go for day. So, Very good, yeah. They say what the Melbourne's the, the place with five seasons in one day, right? <laughs> right, that's right. You've got to pick the right time to go out and get some sun and the right time to get some, uh, to get some cooler weather. Very good. So, um, look, um, just uh, to the audience, we're going to give it a few more minutes. We're slowly getting people joining. Um, so, yeah, so I will we'll start very shortly just to allow some uh, other sort of late strugglers to join us, which is good. And I hear uh, so Melbourne's in, uh, in a lockdown again. Yeah, look, uh, I mean, it is, it is what it is. I mean, everybody's kind of, um, you know, used to the practice of it now. And we just sort of... Uh, you know, knock it down, do what we need to do and, um, you know, carry on and, you know, fo focus on the future, so. Yeah, we'll focus on the recovery and the positives, right? Positives being less people on the streets. So here in the Philippines, it's, it's quite nice. There's no traffic. So we've been in a, a sort of an endless lockdown, um, which has its pros and cons. But in my, in my sort of, what I like about it is uh, there's no bugger around. So yeah, you can move around. There's uh, the usual two hour trip to get a couple of kilometers is now five minutes. So yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, cool, cool. I mean, it must be a, a lot easier crossing the street there then. Um, I remember from my experience over there, it can be pretty hectic. Yeah, it's like organized chaos, right? Um, I quite like, I quite like it um, at times, but but it can get a bit stressful. But uh, yeah, we're, we've got a growing economy out here at the moment, and uh, yeah, it'll continue to grow, I believe, and uh, a lot of opportunity for for business once this COVID malarkey goes away. All right, so just to the audience, we're going to start in a minute. Um, we uh, I think we've got the majority of people on the session. Anyone else can join us a bit later. We are actually recording this session for uh, the information of anyone on this event, so I will send you the recording afterwards. Um, once I've edited it and uh, we're going to run a few polls as well. So we want to try and make this as interactive as possible, um, which I think is really important. So let's get started. So today we're going to be talking about the importance of future proofing your sales engine with CRM technology. Um, I've got an exciting guest on today's event, Jeremy. Jeremy, you've already seen and heard from him in our little chit chat prior to the setup. Really happy to have you on the session today, Jeremy. Very excited. Yes, thanks, Matt. It's, uh, you know, good to be involved, and um, you know, I look forward to this morning's discussion. Fantastic, great stuff. Okay, let's uh, let's move on. All right. So, as I mentioned, this is going to be a very interactive session. Um, the purpose of today is for you to come out with some learnings around CRM automation, um, but also learn what sort of what some of the triggers are. So, you no, know, firstly, what are people using yourselves? What, what, are, what are most people using a CRM for now? Uh, probably prior to 2021, you know, for in the last five, 10 years, and what's, what's, what's changed and what are some of those triggers that have caused a, a more of a need for more sophisticated CRM technology and features? Um, and then at the end, we're going to look at ways at how you can adapt your own CRM, and then we do a bit of a wrap up. But we'll start with a very brief introduction, so you know who you're talking to, or you know who you're hearing from, rather. So Jeremy, I'll let you take the floor. Um, you're the expert at what you do. So yeah, go ahead. Introduce yeah, yourself. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, as, as yeah, mentioned, uh, my name is Jeremy Robertshaw. I'm the founder uh, and customer success manager at Agility Digital. Um, I've been involved in the uh, digital marketing space, focusing on B2B businesses for the last 15 years. Um, you know, I was around with the, the beginning of, you know, Facebook coming on board, but people started really focusing on SEO through Google. Um, and since that time, we've become really sort of a specialist in, in CRMs and marketing and sales automation processes. So helping organizations understand how to streamline what they're doing um, and how to sort of, I guess, best measure um, the performance of their businesses. 
uh, or work with businesses that have uh, used the CRMs to grow across 120 countries. Um, and I love what I do, insanely passionate about digital marketing and automation. Um, and also it can be pretty brutally honest sometimes. So, you know, if I, if I see that something's not working uh, with what, yeah. what the clients are doing, um, or, you know, I can see that I'm heading down the wrong direction, I, um, I, I'll be straight up and I'll, I'll tell them why and, I, you know, present data and information to obviously back that up. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty excited to be, be part of today's presentation and, and really have this discussion with you. So thanks for having me on board, Matt. No, absolutely. Really happy to have you on board today. Very, very excited. And yeah, I'll say I've known you for a little while. You're definitely brutally honest and that's a great quality, mate. So um, yeah, no, in terms of your expertise and sort of guiding and advising people on the right technologies for CRM, um, yeah, Jeremy's your man. <laughs> he's, the, he's the guy to go to. So look, moving on, um, I'll give a bit of an introduction to myself. Very brief. Um, I'm the co-founder of NatCow and Prospecting. Uh, we're a high-end um, outsourced BDR, SDR, sales enablement organization. So we help sales reps to achieve and smash their pipeline um, across the technology sector, across multiple industries. Um, I've spent about 18 years uh, in sales enablement. So I've run teams across multiple technology organizations, across multiple geographics, including the UK, Australia, uh, and now Southeast Asia here in the Philippines of all places. Um, I've released a couple of books, um, one where I talk about how I got to 250,000 cold calls. Um, that was about three years ago. I would say that's probably more like half a million cold calls now. Uh, and I've just released a new book uh, known as Perfect Prospecting. So if anyone out there is looking to find the ideal clients, the right client fit, um, or it's just a little bit um, unsure of how and who they should be targeting, um, buy my book. Um, you, honestly, it'll, uh, it'll guide you. It's guided me over the last five years. It'll guide you and help you to find the right people for your uh, organization. It'll help you grow long lasting client relationships. And on that note, the first 20 attendees uh, that registered for this event uh, will receive a free physical copy. I'll reach out to you for your individual address. And as long as Amazon can send it to you, I'll send you the copy. If not, I'll send you the... Uh, the actual, um, what do you call it, the, the Kindle copy for you guys to have via email, all right? Moving on. So we're not going to wrap up right now. That was a little bit premature, wasn't it? <laughs> so look, we're going to, uh, that, that's, that's, that's all the slides you're going to see. Um, so we're now going to move into the discussion. So, so Jeremy, um, CRM, right? I, I, when I first started using my CRM, uh, when I first, was first out of university, I used this thing called Goldmine. And uh Really cool piece of technology, very basic, more for data repository, right? And that's, I mean, from, from, from my sort of years of experience, that's what I and my clients and people I've, I've been working with have been using a CRM for, right? So, um, look, I want to open up the uh, the audience to this as well. So, um, if anyone, uh, if anyone can please join us on our first poll, we're about to activate it now. We want to know. How do you currently use your CRM right now, right? So multiple choice, please go away. And once those results come through, we'll, um, we'll discuss those later. But yeah, but back to you, Jeremy. So, so for me personally, um, CRM was more of a repository. Um, it's only in the last sort of, I guess, couple of years I've been learning about these new features that have sort of transformed my business and what I do. Um, so I guess what I'd like to do first, Jeremy, is... is, is is look at some of the traditional uses of what a CRM is used for, right? Um, when I, I started using mine just for, for just for data, um, I thought it was too expensive otherwise. Um, so what do you find people traditionally use their CRM for? Yeah, look, uh, Matt, traditionally sort of what, what we've found is people tend to use it as just a database for everything. Um, you know, from, the, from whether it being actual clients to qualified leads, to, you know, business cards that they pick up at a conference and they've just chucked the information sure. in there. They have a name, maybe a phone number, uh, they'll have an email address, they're not sure if it's currently relevant or not. Um, and, and really what ends up happening is it sits there and a lot of people don't think use that information um, it, it, to the benefit that they could. Um, and what they tend to do is, you know, maybe once a month, once a quarter or whenever they kind of feel like it, you know, they might send out a, you know, a marketing um, newsletter or, you know, an EBM for some reason to promote a few couple of services. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't really sort of look at it as being a centralized tool for their whole, their whole business and understanding actually how that relates to everything that they're doing. 
Um, so what ends up happening is we've got a, you know, a massive pool of data um, that isn't really refined or you know, structured, segmented and set up in a way that they can really leverage of it to, to provide the right sort of communications. Um, you, you know, you're sort of talking about when, when you first started on, on your CRM and, and obviously using yeah. it in a similar way. Um, you know, what, what was the sort of the reason behind doing that that have you found, you know? It's a great question. Um, honestly, that's what I thought a CRM was for, just scoring data. Um, I was um, informed of additional features and I know Salesforce had things such as Chatter and other functions for many years. Uh, but for me, I thought, well, I'm a small business. Why do I need to spend a, a few thousand dollars or whatever it is every month for every year on, on, on additional features? I mean, I, I'm just, there's only six or seven people in my organization when I first started. Well, why should I, uh, why do I need those additional tools? So, so for me, I guess it was lack of, I was very naive and I was very lacking the knowledge behind what and how a CRM um, can be automated and, and what you can automate the CRM with. Um, I chose HubSpot because I think it's one of the better CRMs and they're very smart in their approach. They, they give you free functionality. So I had a free CRM for five years until I opted for the professional version that, like I said, completely transformed my business. Um, but the, the question to you, um, Jeremy, so sales CRM automation has been around uh, for quite a while now. Are you noticing more of your customers when they reach out to you, or sorry, potential clients rather, are they looking for more automation as opposed to just a data repository now and, 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 and being able to sort of manage and organize their prospects in a more efficient way? Look, I think um, a lot of organizations have noticed sort of over, you know, the last sort of five or six years that, um, you know, everyone's sort of client poor. Um, obviously, their clients have a lot of information thrown at them all the time. So making sure that they're actually sending clients information that's relevant to their needs and, you know, who they are and what they do um, mm. It's really, really important. And obviously by structuring their CRM and, and automating sure. and using the right sort of properties and, and values inside of that enables them to better communicate, um, but also understand where um, those communications are being successful and how that journey follows right through from the organization. So, you know, gone are the days of, you know, just sending out an email and going, oh, okay, wow, we got, you know, a 40% open rate, um, you know, and of that 20% click-through rate. That information doesn't actually really mean anything unless you're understanding why they're clicking through, who's clicking through, and then what actions they're actually taking afterwards, and whether or not that is actually driving through to a meaningful relationship um, with that potential client in the long term. Um, and so by having all of this in place, organizations are now starting being, being able to actually, one, identify where their, their marketing spend's going. Um, they're identifying being able to identify actually how the relationship with the sales team is going with that. Um, and then actually how they're handling that moving forward. So, you know, it, it's sort of the, with the automation and, and adding all these tools to it, it's becoming not just the customer relationship tool, but really more of a centralized business management tool as well, which is uh, great to see people taking that on. Very good. Um, so, 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 so I guess what you're saying is, is it's, there's probably a lot of, business owners out there that um, know there's additional features, but they probably need a bit of guidance and consulting and, and handholding to understand what those benefits might, might be. And that's certainly in my case, um, after many conversations with other business owners and, and consultants, and um, I was quite, quite often I'd be pushed by a lot of individuals to, to automate because that's the future. And I was always putting up a wall saying, hey, I, I don't think I'm ready. You know, I'm just a small business. This is for companies like Oracle and Microsoft. I don't, I'm, I'm too small for this. Um, until HubSpot um, gave me a fantastic uh, end of financial year deal, um, which I'm not allowed to disclose. But um, <laughs> it was a um, great opportunity for me to sort of cross over the line and, and truly understand what benefits of automation are there. So, yeah, for anyone looking, uh, I, now's a great time to start automating your CRM, whether you're a Salesforce man or a HubSpot uh, man or whatever it may be. Cool. So look, the results of the, the poll are in, it's quite mixed actually. So we have, uh, I guess, a mix of exactly 33% from the audience that are using it for data only uh, versus 33% for marketing EDM and 33% for advanced automation. So I mean, it looks like a third of the audience uh, are using their CRM for an automation already uh, and are on that journey, uh, whereas the other sort of 66% are uh, 
not that I'm more on a bit of a uh, they're using us CRM for the sort of traditional features of data repository marketing uh sending your EDM and that sort of stuff that, that, that's quite interesting were you expecting those results Jeremy yeah it's quite interesting to see that it's a, sort of a bit of an even spread um okay. you know it'd be interesting to see what's holding organizations back from from using you know more mark more of the automation tools and the actual um, data analytics side of things um, but with the ones that are actually currently using that, you know, how much of that's been uh, customized to, to suit their businesses' processes and practices and really support uh, the sales team and the other parts of the organization to do their job, um, you know, more optimized and, and streamlined. Great. Okay. Well, look, let, let's move on to uh, our next talking point. So thank you, everyone, for putting the time to completing our first poll. So there's three polls to complete during this session. Um, so look, modern selling, right? Um, what's changed in 2021? It's it's really uh, something that I've personally had my hand on my heart for the last at least year, especially since COVID hit us. And we're not going to make this about COVID because that's everything seems to be about COVID. And I also see a bit of humour behind it, but at the same time, just look at what COVID has done. It's sped up the evolution of the the sales uh modernization right would you agree jeremy like it's you know the work from home phenomenon the the um the fact that people just want to update their technology and, and we're sort of being forced uh, to do less face-to-face -face meetings and hopefully that'll change but as a result it, it, it's become increasingly harder to reach people that are working from home um people are fighting for for, for, for time slots with c-level executives and CLO executives and professionals are just so time poor, right? Um, demand for information is increasing. 80% of buyers are now doing their research before talking to vendors. So they already know your company and what you do before you even speak with them. So you've got to get better articulating your value um, other than just giving the ba basic features and functions. You've got to make your value about um, them, about, about your prospect, right? And it's becoming increasingly harder to drive deals not just generate new deals, reach individuals, generate top pipeline, but also drive deals through mid and through the end of the pipeline, right? So, you know, business owners are constantly hunting for more efficient practices to, to save costs, right? And, and even for me and my organization, not only is it harder for us to reach people, um, our clients are demanding better results for a lower fee and we have to accommodate that. Now, I don't agree with the lower fee part, but I do agree we need to provide better value. So I personally invested a, a large amount of money back into my organization, which has actually enabled me to create things like automation. I get leads that come into my sales um, dashboard every day of people that are hiring SDRs, organizations wanting to hire SDRs, organizations that have upgraded their technology. And this is due to using advanced uh, intelligence, intelligence organizations like Trigger and Lucia, uh, more on the Trigger side of things that give me access to mobile phone numbers to reach people who are working from home. And at the same time, automating that with HubSpot and using companies like Jeremy to help significantly automate that process. So for me, when I contact my prospects, you know, they're already on that um, cycle and journey of, hey, you know, we are looking at this right now, right? Like I said, it's harder to reach people. You still want to go through that process of nine touch points to, to reach people. Some say it's more like 12. It used to be three or four, 10 years ago. Um, the reality is we have to automate and monetize the way that we operate as sales professionals and business owners, or we're going to get left behind, right? So, Jeremy, what I'd like to understand is when I um, updated my CRM for automation, so I'm just going to let a few more people in, so just give me, give me a few seconds to admit those. So, yeah, back to it. So, yeah, Jeremy, so... When I look at HubSpot now and I look at my CRM since I've upgraded the professional automation, I see it as one place for everything. Like I do my invoicing uh, from HubSpot. I do my sales calls from HubSpot. I send my emails from HubSpot. All my leads go into HubSpot. Uh, my WhatsApp's going to HubSpot. Everything is one repository. Do you think there's this need for a one toolkit? Um, you know, everything in one toolkit, like a carpenter that might, you know, traditionally might only be able to, no, do your bathroom or, or, or fit out your uh, your decking outside. Now there's this need for a carpenter that does everything. Um, would you say that's more of the mentality for the, the toolbox within with the, with the Salesforce or a uh, HubSpot uh, environment? Yeah, definitely, Matt. Um, look, there's, there's a couple of things, obviously, that have helped 
drivers as well. You know, if you go back sort of two years ago, you know, it, we're only a few people using tools like Calendly, for example, um, to book meetings. You know, Zoom was something that kind of got used inside of, you know, the corporate space that wasn't wasn't common. Um, okay. Obviously now um, with, with the drive of, you know, the modern workplace and people working remotely and all that kind of thing, obviously everybody's now using all these different systems. Um, and obviously to, to keep your head above all of that and understand what's going on, you know, you, you don't want to be logging into to three different systems to book an appointment or find out what's going on and all of that sure. side of things. So by using a, a centralized um, CRM, obviously you're bringing all of that stuff in uh, into one location where you can manage and, and keep an eye on everything and help that automation process as well. Um, from, uh, I guess, a business point of view as well, it's, it's you know, uh, using an effective CRM, it, it removes the whole sort of silo um, yeah. in your organization as well, you know. So traditionally people look at, you know, you have your marketing department, you have your sales department, you have your operations department and, and you know, finance department. And they all sort of operated in their own way and then, you know, would present, you know, reports to the board or, or you know, their managers, um, you know, every month or whatever, oh, this is going on, this is happening here. Um, but there's there traditionally hadn't been that that real strong sort of cross correlation of data and actually understanding um, for a start, you know, what marketing efforts are leading through the sales, um, yeah. what in that sales process is is working, um, you know, where you're seeing the fall over, um, you know, then to how quickly there's onboarding happening for the services that you're delivering and then how are you actually delivering those services on. Um, and I guess by by having um, you know the CRM in place, a lot of organisations now are, are able to, to look at their business more holistically as well. Um, okay. You know, personally, you know, every morning I jump on and, and, and hop into my dashboard, open it, I can see what marketing has been working, where visitors have come from, how long they're spending on my website, what pages they're actually looking at, what they're reading, what documents they're downloading, all of that kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, when they come through and, you know, the sales team reach out to them, we can actually see, okay, cool, they've done this, this, and this, and this has turned to X amount of sales volume. Um, and we've been able to, to deliver this result actually on the, on the service that we provide. Um, and then this is how we've, you know, continued that ongoing relationship as well. So, you know, as a customer success manager, you know, I have a, a series of tasks that pop up every day that, you know, remind me to contact uh, this person, discuss what's going on with this project, what's happening with, you know, the delivery of their website or their CRM system. And it, it, it makes uh, your team accountable, but not in, a, and not in a, you know, monitoring and tracking them kind of way, but also like in a way that kind of goes, oh, okay, cool. I now understand what my role in the business is as a whole, rather than kind of, you know, putting one person in your team on a pedestal and going, oh, all the sales come through this guy. You actually go, okay, actually, this is where the results come from, how we've all worked together. Um, and this is what's working for, for us. So obviously organizations are getting great amount of benefit from that. Um, but what the, the great thing as well is when they, you know, implement a CRM correctly, you know, whether it's HubSpot, Salesforce, or, you know, they're using Dynamics 365 or, or whatever. Um, that they're actually able to kind of really understand what works, what doesn't, um, yes. and, and hold them and streamline their processes and build that CRM actually around their business rather than kind of jumping into someone else's process. And I think that's part of the reason why some organizations might, um, you know, have challenges with it when they first bring it on and say, oh, the you know, sales team don't want to use it or, the wrong information is getting put in it's because they're using a standard out of the box solution. Mm -hmm. um, whereas if you sit down and actually create it around the way that you're currently doing business, you're only going to improve things rather than, than holding it as well. So um, definitely there's a lot of support. If you get the right stakeholders involved, that can um, eliminate that, those, those struggles with change management as well. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, 